Okay, continue on with the METO series of videos. We're going to look at disease models in potatoes. So again, the biological factors for the disease, the key is the environmental conditions in the crop in terms of potatoes, which we'll see. You've got to have the host, the pathogen, and all these factors need to be present for that disease to actually cause an outbreak. If it's a newly emerged disease in the area, the inoculum levels may be too low for the pathogen to cause an outbreak. So the disease triangle explains this well. We have the host, which is the potato crop, the environment, which can tip the scales in favor of the pathogen to overwhelm the crop's uh, natural defenses. So we need to know uh, in-field very specific weather conditions now for the development of this disease. We need to know what the temperatures are, humidity, leaf wetness periods, and rainfall events, which then drives the disease process. The disease process itself has its own management issues, things like call piles or infected seed, which caused the original uh, spore release uh, in the early uh, spring to summer. And then that infects the tissue, which then can cause secondary infections throughout the year. So this is a multiple spray disease, which is governed off the environmental conditions, which can either shorten the spray window or lengthen it. So the importance of localized weather data cannot be underestimated in this case. We cannot uh, drive a model for uh, potato lake blight off of data that's 10 kilometers away. We need to know the conditions in the field. And that's what this shows you is we have one at a main office under a grass and one in the actual canopy. We see very clearly here a very large significant period of disease development, high humidity and leaf wetness periods. The one under the grass environment shorter period, much shorter period for disease development, lower humidity and lack of leaf wetness periods. So we need to have that uh, station at the field uh, so that we get the proper data to drive the model. And it shows the model sensitivity to the differences in location as well. So in the potato production system for field climate, there's a whole host of models available to you for a variety of things from aphid, Colorado potato beetles, a lot on late blight, and other diseases as well. Today we're talking about two very common models, better known as a TomCast model uh, and a um, hybrid of that called the no blight model. So the value proposition uh, for diseases in potatoes and the late blight models is very high because of the impact of this disease over the entire year and then the effect it can have on storage as well, secondary infections. So with a very site-specific weather station, you know the modeled conditions for your disease risk. You can time your fungicide applications based on the actual conditions and the risk pressure from the model. So you stretch or, sh or shorten your spray window, which we'll see, see, and you'll actually preserve the yields as well as the quality of the crop on a well-timed fungicide application. So the TomCast uh, late blight model, one of the first that developed, uh, it's a computer-based model to predict fungal disease development. It's driven off of data over a 24-hour period, and it may result in the formation of what's referred to as a disease severity value, or a DSV. So if the conditions are conducive, the DSV values will climb during a day. So you can see an increment of from nothing to as much as four in a day. So the DSV accumulates, the disease pressure continues to build on the crop, and when the number of accumulated DSV values exceeds a spray interval, an application of fungicide is recommended to relieve the disease pressure. And this, of course, then uh, is whether it's a contact or systemic. will change the period of efficacy as well. These disease severity values are shown in a graph, as well as the sum for the period of time. And the first interval, depending upon location, can vary between 15 to 20 DSV uh, points. And when they exceed that, that's when the first spray rec is recommended in an area. After that, then you look at the seven day change in the DSV value is important. So for example, if you have a zero to three in seven days, that's a low risk, four to eight is a moderate, and a nine or above is a high risk. And again, that's that could be a high risk, but you have a product of control of X period of time based on the type of product you're applying. So the TomCast model uh, shows up like this within field climate. We have it high highlighted here. We can see the weather conditions, the humidity and temperatures. You can see the leaf wetness periods. And you can see the DSV values for each uh, given period when they accumulated. So we can see here that there was a one or there was a two on this day, and then it goes along. So what we need to do is come up with the total number over 
a period of time and when that goes past 17 the first time that's when the first application will be applied the total in this period from June through August is 52 in terms of the DSV values accumulated of course these DSV values are a matrix between the periods of leaf wetness humidity and temperature for any given period of time so the no blight model uh, like the blight cast weighs relative humidity more importantly than uh, the rainfall events so the spray interval becomes shorter with the accumulation of uh, an inch of rain over the previous seven days under the same number of accumulated severity values no blight differs from blight cast in that the accumulation of values is based on relative humidity no blight uh, does not stop accumulating uh, conducive conditions when the humidity drops below 90 percent that's a critical factor so above 90 percent so in an 18 hour period the relative humidity greater than 90 percent will accumulate severity values dependent upon the temperature average temperature so three values at 18.3 two at 13.3 and one at 10 and zero at four or above 29. So once the severity in this case reaches 18 uh, after accumulation of a period of time, that's when the first uh, fungicide application is recommended. The value of the predicted model is to provide the users a reliable estimate of when the conditions are conducive and not conducive for the development of late blight. So the model provides some guidance on when a grower can stretch the spray interval and with minimal risk as well as when the spray interval needs to be reduced or tightened up uh, with the crop is at risk because the crop is at risk so we'll see that here in this case we're looking again at the no blight here we see the DSV values climbing so we have a four it's more sensitive to the humidity and leaf wetness and you can see the spray intervals here so these are the disease severity values on the other side is the spray interval so as the disease uh, severity values climb the spray interval gets down to five days in this case as it dries out it goes up to 14 days and it stays long during this period of time because there is no real disease severity values and again as the values climb it shrinks the spray window so it's providing some guidance on the spray window and of course that's dependent upon your type of product contact systemic and the control period of that product so the impact of potato light blight is quite substantial in uh, potatoes especially on the yield and more so on quality uh, so we have the ability with field specific solutions for proper disease modeling and assessing the changing of risk levels there's a number of different models the number of spray applications is dependent upon course the level of inoculum variety susceptibility type of product and the environmental condition and the spray and row can vary substantially based on the local field weather data hence the need for local uh, weather stations in a potato crop anywhere from 5 to 12 to 15 days dependent upon the conditions that occur so the worst conditions of course are under those moderate temperatures with high levels of humidity and leaf wetness so the ability is in software to look at the length of that spray interval you can stretch it or shorten it dependent upon the field specific condition conditions which uh, you know, of course protects the plant and reduces it can also reduce the amount of product and application uh, cost if you're stretching the window so reducing one spray on a 300 acre crop if it's 19 dollars per application product that's 5700 dollars of savings on a 300 dollar uh, a 300 acre crop so if I spent $1,500 on my investment it's still a four to one return on my investment if you look at it another way if it's robbing the crop in terms of yield and quality uh, you may have a larger field and I'm going to lose you know 10% uh, yields on uh, you know my field on $300 per acre well then we're talking about you know over an 800 acre crop of potatoes $240,000 lost income in this case I may have multiple uh, devices in multiple fields so my cost of my IOT device is ten thousand dollars but my ROI in this case is still you know very good at ten over ten to one so uh, you know whether it's a, a small individual field or a large field or fields there's still a very good return and then you know we're not looking at the secondary effect that this has in storage as well in terms of quality so you really know before you go you save time and money it verifies the field weather conditions you have a verified model of infection conditions the the verified severity of the infection 
you have a timing of when to spray, hour and date. You also have an indication of the spray uh, length in terms of short or long period. You have a record of the past infections and when the events occurred as well. And there's also a spray cast model inside that allows you to time your sprayings in addition to the environmental conditions. Thank you.